Hey there, Erica from Feel Your Core. Today we are tackling a warm up for your racket sports. But first, make sure you warm up. Bike, row, take a quick jog, maybe a little high knees, some fast footwork drills, and then we'll get right into it with a cat cow. So as we go cat cow, we round for the cat and then we arch for the cow. Exhaling into the flexion, which is the forward bending, inhaling into your extension, which is the arch of the back. So these first three, you can see I'm sending my head to tail and tail to head at the same time for both flexion, rounding, and extension. That's the arch. And then I start to start with my tail curling towards my head and then tail uh, going the other way into extension. And again, so tail to head in the rounding and then tail to head in the extension. That's just to move my spine in a different way. And then the final three, you'll see that I lead with my head articulating through my spine to my tail on both the flexion and extension. Again, just a different way, a mind-body piece. We typically do things at the same time. So this is challenging my spinal articulation. Um, and a little bit of mind-body piece there. Next, we're gonna flow into um, thread the needle. So still in the quadruped position here, hands and knees, and then you see me rotate, sliding my arm through. Um, it's between you know my leg and my arm. Uh, when I do this, I do like to bend my elbow back to have my shoulder blades gliding down my back. Uh, rotation is something that, you know, we're going to definitely use during your paddle sports, right? So we would just want to make sure that the body is ready to rotate, taking a couple nice deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling in that rotation. Um, always, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of stretching per se, but that act of lengthening. So using the breath, um, and working on one side of strength to lengthen that other side Next, we're going to go into um, a chest expansion with uh, cervical rotation. Okay, I'm bringing this to you from Pilates. So chest expansion, we inhale, press back through those bands, and then I look right, center, left, center, and I bring the bands back to start. As I inhale and drag my knuckles across the floor, I grow tall. And I'm trying not to have a change in the shoulders or ribs as I isolate the rotation to my cervical spine, okay, the bones of the neck. So a lot of things going on in this exercise. Again, as I begin to pull my arms back, I'm opening my chest. I'm making sure I feel the length in my triceps from the elbow all the way to the armpit. I've got an athletic stance here, soft bend in the knees, so I'm not locking out. And I'm thinking about, especially as I pull, um, length and opposition. So crown of my head going one way and then those feet going the other way. Breath is a huge part of this one. Again, it's called chest expansion, right? So we're expanding the chest. And then just adding that bit of cervical rotation. Again, the bones of the neck. This is a good one to practice. Remember the days when we used to look for our blind spot? Um, we didn't have a little light that flashed and our cars made noises. This, this, is a, this is a throwback to that one. So if you find you're having a hard time checking your blind spot, maybe spend a little time with chest expansion. So next I have my band with my handles. I'm sliding my hands through those handles to get the resistance I want on this band. So this right here is going to be an overhead press. So I start um, with the band on tension. I keep that same tension as I press overhead. Right? So especially if you're going to be doing a paddle sport that you know your arms are going to go overhead, we're just doing um, these overhead presses to warm up all those muscles that are involved there, the joints, and um, you know making sure the uh, arms, the shoulders can move through that full range of motion to take your arms overhead properly. Next, it's the same setup with the arms. This time I'm doing what's called dislocates. Okay, I like using a band here because you can stretch that band out to help you if you need a little bit more room. It's a little bit harder if you're just using a dowel or maybe like a, a broomstick and you're not used to doing this exercise. All right, so again, I am thinking about length through the crown of my head, opposition length through my feet, doing my best to keep my ribs over my pelvis. You'll see now I'm doing a little bit of a variation on the dislocate, starting on one side, dislocating around, 
and then bringing it back to start as opposed to the first three that you saw that were just nice and easy front and back. If you're still having a hard time with the dislocate front to back, stick with that before you try um, going into this kind of round robin um, piece of it. Next up, we are going to keep this band and now we're doing band pull aparts. Okay, so now I'm starting at the top and then pulling the band apart as I bring my arms down. Here's a view from the back here so you can see what's happening in my back. I like to think about pulling my elbows apart as they're coming down. When I do my band pull apart, I like to feel the stretch in the front of my chest as those elbows are coming down. Again, soft knee bend, nice athletic stance, trying to stay nice and tall in your posture. Next, we're going to go into internal rotation. So that's the IR if you're reading the description. An external rotation, that's the ER. Uh, for the shoulder joint. So um, right here, you see I'm using that little door frame gadget that I've told you guys about before. The link will be in the description um, so that I can start working on my external rotation. So what you'll notice here is my elbow is lined up with my shoulder. You can see here, I decided to go into a split stance because I just like the way that felt better. You can see some excess band because I'm trying to find what is the right tension on the band for me. And then I left my thumb out here so that you can see that the thumb goes up kind of, and back when I'm in external rotation. Um, the way I teach my clients is that typically when you're in external rotation, whether you're supine, prone, so on your back, on your front, seated, standing, if you're going into external rotation, that thumb is usually up. So now I'm going to internal rotation, again, trying to make sure that elbow lines up with the shoulder and that thumb points down as I internally rotate. So to go from external to internal rotation on the same side, all I did was turn around, okay? So I just kept a hold of that band and I just turned around, all right? So super easy. I'm staying on the same side. I do the external, then I do the internal. So what you see here is now I put it in the other hand. What I'm actually thinking about right near here is how do I stay in this frame free wall? But I figured it out. So I'm starting with, um, let's see here, I am starting with, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm checking out my tension. And by the way, this is uh, my shoulder with uh, a lot of area of opportunity. All right. So I'm trying to figure out where is the right resistance for me? Um, where should I be standing? And then I start with the internal rotation here. Okay. So again, that thumb is pointing down so you can see it's the internal rotation. I'm also thinking about reaching my elbow out towards the wall to make space in that joint so that I can rotate. All right. Again, you'll see me peeking at this one a lot. I'm, I don't have a mirror. So occasionally I check in on this guy because this side's a bit weaker and I want to make sure that my form is, is doing good. So again, I just turn around, try to figure out where I want to stand in the frame here for you guys. And <clears throat> again, this is the side that is, um, a bit more challenging from me. So I'm just taking a little extra care in finding what is the right tension here, uh, making sure that elbow is in line with the shoulder. And then you see me going into that external rotation, that thumb is up. So the arm starts parallel to the floor. And then you can see that thumb go up and back for the external rotation. All right. Um, I am exhaling as I'm getting towards um, end range on that one, inhaling kind of to prepare exhale through the motion. And we're done with that. So next we're going to go into monster walk. So you can see here, you can use a mini band or you can just use that same band with the handles. So I'm going to show you the band with the handles um, in the event this is what you have and you don't have a mini band. I always have this band with handles in my tennis bag, always, because look at how many things you can do. So monster walks, we're warming up the hip complex. So when I do monster walks, I think about pushing off the inside of one foot and leg, which allows the other leg to open and step. Notice my steps aren't really big, and this isn't a very heavy band. I am more focused on the feeling that I know that I want to warm up my hip complex, thinking about pushing off the inside of one leg to open and lift the other. Good posture, soften in the knees. If I wasn't holding, I most likely would have that um, mini band on and you can go as low as you want to. Um, and you can do this as many times as you want to as well. Next, now that I feel like my hips have started to warm up, I'm doing what I call a roll down to a mobility squat. 
All right, so arms are up. I roll down like I'm peeling away from a wall. I go from this cat position to the cow position in my spine, raise one arm, the other, and then push through the legs to stand. I really enjoy these. The first couple are always like, ooh, you really kind of feel everything. Um, but I really like them because it really is a full body warm up. Um, your shoulders are getting the mobility. Um, from having, you know, to raise those arms long overhead, your hips are getting the mobility, your knees, your ankles, you will notice that my heels are down. If you're not able to keep your heels down, you may want to elevate your heels on like a two and a half pound plate, um, you know, or like maybe like a, an, an inch high, like really thick, hard book. And that'll help you um, as you continue to work on your ankle mobility if you're unable to keep those heels down. Last piece here is going to be this lateral lunge um, to what I call an open rotation. So what I'm thinking about is, you know, hip to hip, I want to feel the stretch on the inner thigh. And what I'm working towards with opening these arms is this feeling that they're in goal post. And so you can see each rep I do, this opening uh, gets a little better. So again, a nice work through the whole body here, kind of putting it all together, rotation, opening the chest, right? Um, getting low um, into the hips, right? Going side to side on those ankles, neck is rotating, thoracic spine is rotating. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. Like and share with a friend. See you next time.